So good afternoon to all of you. Thank you for coming to this press availability. Uh, we appreciate all of your attendance. Uh, I'm June Atkinson, State Superintendent. And although I have not been around for 75 years, I do know that North Carolina has had a standard course of study uh, in place for more than 75 years. And having a standard course of study in place is a way of ensuring that all of our children, each child in North Carolina, has a consistent set of standards for our to learn. And always, as a part of that process, especially in the last 20 years, we have had a process of reviewing standards and making changes. Uh, for those of us who have been in education, we know that there's no such thing as a perfect set of standards. So we have to keep working and working and working to improve standards, especially to match the needs and the potential needs of our students. Our big goal is always to make sure that our students graduate with a diploma that allows them to be successful at the next stage in their lives. That may be in a career, that may be in a community college, that may be in a university. Uh, and we know that in addition to preparing people for careers and college, we also must prepare our students for citizenship. There are two, there's one foundational area, mathematics, that is becoming increasingly important as we look at the future. And so it is very critical to us who work on behalf of each child in our school here in the Department of Public Instruction to make sure that we follow a, um, a consistent process where we get feedback from teachers and uh, business people and our college professors and our community college people and parents and others to ensure that we continue to make excellent changes in our standard course of study. And so today, Drs. Uh, Marie Petrie Martin, uh, Dr. Martin, would you please raise your hand? <laughs> and uh, Dr. Jennifer Curtis uh, presented the changes to the State Board of Education that we are propo proposing for to improve Math 1, 2, and 3. And this work has been under the direction of Dr. Tiffany per Perkins. All of the people who have been working with math have extensive experience being classroom teachers, being in leadership roles. And they have, uh, they have used the process to make sure that we continue to evaluate and improve the standards. Again, it's, been, it's very important for us to hear the teacher voice, to hear the parent voice, to hear the professor voice so that we utilize the experts that we have in mathematics. So with that, I want to recognize our staff for them to highlight key points for today's presentation. And we also have some special guests with us who have a vested interest in the work we're doing. First of all, our North Carolina PTA president, Kelly Maxson, would you please stand? And then we have the University of North Carolina Greensboro professor, Dr. P. Holt Wilson, would you please stand? And we have one of our teachers, Wake County teacher, Suzanne Gibbons, who has been a part of this process. And we have a parent with us from Union County, Padmaja Sastry, who has young children in school and who is a stay-at-home mom and who knows a lot about, math about mathematics because of her work in business and industry. So we believe that there are good spokespeople to be here today to explain any, um, or to answer any questions that you may have. So with that, uh, Dr. P. P. Martin. Well, thank you all so much for being here today. And Dr. Atkinson is certainly correct that one of the most important things we can ever do is spend a lot of time talking about what students should know and be able to do in the state of North Carolina. So this is a very, very important process and we want to use this time and this opportunity with our, our media partners in the room 
to say that this information will be posted and we want people to really go there, take a look and provide feedback. That is what is critical as we continue in this process. We need feedback to make quality decisions for our students. Um, as we talked about today, we want a set of content standards that are clear, that people can pick those standards up and actually understand what they mean. They can find resources and materials to teach those content standards because we know there is a big difference between standards and curriculum. We want to be able to provide professional development around those content standards uh, to support our teachers. And we want to be able to provide clear sequencing and rigor in those content standards as well. So as people review them, be thinking about those things that are so critically important to our, our young people in North Carolina because our goal at the end of the day is to have our students to be the best prepared in the area of mathematics uh, going through math one, two, and three as high school students uh, in the state of North Carolina. So thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, I'm Dr. Tiffany Perkins, Director of our K-12 um, Standards Curriculum and uh, Instruction Division. I uh, want to reiterate um, what Dr. Petrie Martin shared around the difference between standards and, and curriculum. But I also want to um, publicly thank the higher ed partners, our classroom teachers, our district leaders who actually have a lens and anchor their curriculum work at the local level in the standards. And so having that understanding of curriculum development around the table to take a look at the current standards to look at the feedback that was provided to us by educators um, and focus groups and uh, external stakeholders as we discussed in the meeting earlier in this phase of data collection because it's important while we are developing content standards for North Carolina we also want to have folks around the table who have expertise in curriculum development so that we um, have the highest quality standards possible. So I just want to publicly thank all of those who have been involved in that process um, and also thank our staff here um, who have put their math content expertise to work and uh, as I was sharing, I'll just tell a little personal thing. I used to be a math teacher and this really, this process has made me want to go back and be a math teacher. Not in a bad way. <laughs> it's not driving me away. It's just wonderful, rich work to see North Carolina educators around tables, digging into data, digging into standards, and creating what we hope to be the very best standards for North Carolina, and not just in mathematics, but also as we continue through the review of standards and other content areas. So thank you publicly to all those folks who have been involved. Thank you all for being here. Um, don't know how many of you were upstairs, but I just spoke for a long time. So if you weren't, I'm Jen Curtis, I'm the math section chief here at the Department of Public Instruction. Um, you know, we have a process, and I think that's the important thing to take away here, is that the process has been followed, and we have heard the field. We've heard from our teachers, we've heard from our district leaders, we've considered a variety of data, and professionals from across the state, varying levels of education, have all come together to make these standards better for our students. And I think at the end of the day, that's the really the most important point here is that these standards were produced, revised by North Carolina educators for North Carolina students, and that we have listened to the field, we have listened to our teachers, we have listened to our district leaders, and the message has been loud and clear that high school math needed revision, and it needed work now. And so I'm very pleased with the process, and I can't thank everyone enough can't thank Dr. Atkinson enough for her belief and faith in the process and in me to lead that, as well as the various partners who came together, our professors from UNC schools, community college system, district leaders, and classroom teachers. So thank you for being here and being part of helping us represent the story. I represented the institutions of higher ed in North Carolina um, on the writing group as a part of the standards review process. Um, 
As a team, we work to respond um, and integrate feedback from teachers and various stakeholder groups, um, the Academic Standard Review com Commission's report, um, to clarify and strengthen the high school standards in North Carolina, to maintain their rigor and um, extend their mathematical coherence, um, and to offer guidance from the um, research on how students learn mathematics, and how teachers make sense of and implement change. Um, on a personal level, I was honored to work with and learn from um, the expertise and the variety of perspectives that were assembled for the group um, to better support the North Carolina mathematics teachers um, and ensure that all students in North Carolina um, have access to a high quality mathematics education. And I uh, thank you. Thank you. My name is Suzanne Gibbons, and I'm a high school math teacher in Wake County. And I have taught math one, two, and three. And this has been um, an amazing opportunity. I got the, the chance to serve on the data review committee and on the writing team. So uh, I was a part of looking at all the data collected from the focus groups and the surveys and the academic review commission. And then looking at those um, like standard by standard as we look to to make suggestions to the writing team. And uh, in, in the writing team, working with other district leaders, classroom teachers, college professors, in, in the writing team and on the data review committee, we, we work together. And with all the common focus of providing clarity in the standards while maintaining rigor and discussing what students really need to be successful in the future. So this was a great, opportunity, like I said, I really feel like my voice was heard. It was wonderful representing teachers from my region, meeting with other teachers from across the state, district leaders from across the state. Really felt like all of us came together for a common purpose and uh, really uh, put a great uh, effort to collaborate, collaboratively work for what's best for our students. And thank you. My name is Pavna Sastri. I'm a parent of two little boys in third and fourth grade at Weddington Elementary School in Union County. It's far, far from here. Um, I've been following this debate for the past three years, including efforts to table what we have and adopt standards of an entirely different state that doesn't share our strengths or challenges. As a parent, I'm also a volunteer. Um, I'm in the schools almost every day. And I get to see that our kids have many talents. They have talents in languages, sports, visual arts, and also math. And I'm really thrilled to see this effort to place high expectations on our children, not only my children, children in my community, children in our whole state. And um, as we update and clarify our standards, and I'm really happy that it's our state standards, not Minnesota, not Texas, not California, or Massachusetts, our state, North Carolina's math standards, should be world class. Our children should be able to compete with others regardless of their geography. We should be able to set the standards high and make North Carolina a leading state. So my next steps as a parent, and um, you know, I'm in the car rider line, I'm the lunch lady who volunteers so that the teachers can have some time to eat their lunch in peace. I'll be talking to all my friends and neighbors, and I'll be saying, hey, we have these math standards. Do you want to go take a look at them? We'll be going on the website, and we'll be providing feedback on what we think. Are they clear to read? Or do they address the problems and the issues that our business community faces? And we'll be providing feedback through the website. Thank you. My name is Kelly Winston. I'm the North Carolina PTA president. Um, I want to thank you guys for inviting me here today and also um, really appreciate being invited into the process. I was fascinated to listen to the discussions, the rich, rich discussions from all the experts across the state. I have uh, four kiddos, so I am not an expert in teaching it. I'm an expert in watching the students try to get through it. Um, <laughs> our oldest is at Chapel Hill, and then I've got a senior and a ninth grader and a sixth grader, so deep into all of, the, of this. Um, and I'm left there with such confidence knowing 
that I don't have to worry about what the standards, how they, in, uh, that there is, um, I have the faith in the, in the process and really a comfort level in the experts that are, that are doing this for our students and for all students. So it was great to again see the transparency and then to know that parents will have that opportunity and have had that opportunity to provide input, but during public comment to once again review these standards and really give um, some input. But from my perspective, it was just again a high level of confidence that the experts are doing what's right for the students in North Carolina. So thank you for that. Thanks to all of you for your work and thank you for being here today. I noticed a hand went up, so we'll be glad to answer any questions. Yes. Um, hi, Dr. Atkinson, Jess Clark, WUNC. Um, I know that the ASRC, the Academic Standards Review Commission, um, uh, was kind of split on whether to go back to the traditional sequence or, um, or stay with integrated math. Um, I was wondering if you could talk about um, why, um, after, after that process, um, you all decided to stick with integrated math and not go back to Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, etc. If you will look at uh, deep into the report of the Academic Standards Committee, you will see that the recommendation that was not passed was that we go back to Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2 until such time that we would have a great deal of professional development so that we could go to Math 1, 2, and 3. Uh, as we look at our teachers across North Carolina and as we look at the feedback, the teachers have gone through professional development and see the value of being able uh, to integrate geometry, algebra, algebraic concepts, and statistical concepts within one uh, course. So the majority of our teachers, although I would say that we have 100%, but most of our teachers want us to stay on the course of math one, two, and three. And I'll, uh, Dr. Curtis, would you please add to that anything that I may have omitted in answering that think question? You did a fine job. Okay. <laughs> um, I think would, I would say that the integrated sequence is a better approach for all students. Our K-8 standards are integrated in nature already. Um, and when we went integrated at the high school level, we broke down the silos of just the siloed courses, of just having algebra, and then wait, we gotta stop algebra now, let's do some geometry, wait, let's stop geometry, now let's do some algebra again. And so we really opened up more pathways for all students to pursue, um, especially with statistics and quantitative literacy, I'm glad you mentioned that, because those are life-ready skills that used to be not every student was exposed to. So it's very important, I think, to our students that we remain integrated in North Carolina. Yes, uh, Dr. Curtis, you mentioned that the uh, Minnesota standards were more, uh, I think, skills-based and the existing standards were conceptual. Can you explain that? Yes, yes, we have some skill-based standards as well. Right. Um, what I'd like to do is provide you with a crosswalk to more of a an artifact to show you. It's sort of difficult to explain just with words. Um, we used to have objectives and competencies in our standards organized a certain way um, and indicators and we really moved away from that to more of a broad here's the concept overall umbrella. Now let's break that down into smaller pieces that are also concepts but let's show the connections between those. Um, what we noticed with the other standards were there weren't a lot of connections being made, but interesting to know, I happen to know the state leader um, from Minnesota, and their standards were used by the Common Core writing team actually looked at to determine what sort of concepts that they might want to cons consider as well. Um, so while we're both, we both have skills and concepts, it's not an exact one-to-one -one mapping of those, but if I can run upstairs at the conclusion and actually get you a copy of that if you want to better explain it. And I can give a perfect example. I'm a product of a mathematics, a mathematics standards that were totally skill-based. And I had to memorize formulas. And fast forward until I became an adult. And I was having dinner with one of my friends. And I said, I can't remember the formula. 
for changing Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit to Celsius. Do you remember the formula? And he replied, is, no, that I don't remember the formula, but it is a ratio, and it's, it's a ratio, you do this, and he gave me the formula. And I said, how did you do that so quickly? And he said, if you had had a great northern education, you would have been able to do the same. <laughs> so my message is that we need both. And that is the direction of what we're trying to do with the North Carolina standards. It's not either or, it has to be both. Because long after he graduated from college, long after he graduated from high school, he had the conceptual understanding so that he did not have to memorize the formula. He knew how to derive the formula. Yes. Um, can you talk about how many standards there are and how many were actually revised? I, I can provide that data. Okay. I don't have it off the top of my head, but I can provide that data, certainly. Okay. And maybe talk about the regrouping and, and what that really means, because I think that's maybe a little bit confusing for some people. It, in some respects, it's very difficult to say that we eliminated 10 standards and added four and changed two because it, it's not that one-to-one -one relationship. It's a part of making the standards coherent. It's part of making the standards flow. It's a part of having um, building from simple to complex. And it's a part of having clarity in the words. And of course, Math is another language, and consequently, it is a challenge for, for standards to be in a language that everyone can understand. In fact, uh, going back to a personal uh, story, I have a friend who has never liked mathematics, and she said that when you talk about algorithms and quadratic equations and polynomials, you really are cussing. So uh, we have to acknowledge that mathematics is a language that some of us have forgotten because we haven't used it as frequently. And so that's a part of the challenge also. So that clarity is very important for our teachers to have as they recognize what uh, should be taught in each class. There was a concern about, uh, I guess, the speed with which you want to implement this. Can you say that Math 1 is going to be 70% different from what you have now, and Math 2 is different? I'm just trying to get a broad overview of how different each of these courses would be. As it stands right now with the current second draft, um, Math 1 has the least amount of revision. Math 2 and Math 3, um, there's more of a, a transition in what's going on in each courses. And we have some documents for you in the back of the room. And what I would point you to for that sort of information is the <coughs> rationale document. And you'll notice, and I'll give you page numbers to make it easy for you. You'll notice that the topics have been reorganized by force and by function family. So when you ask about numbers of standards, I want to re reiterate what Dr. Atkinson said in that it's very difficult to just count them up as separate standards. For example, algebra and functions go together um, very nicely and you need one to do the other. So you need the mathematical um, computation piece of algebra to be able to study the inputs and outputs found in functions. So they're really not separate standards, but getting back to that language piece, the algebra would be the language of functions. Mm -hmm. So what we did was organize the functions by course, and that drove everything else. We also, and this is way too technical at this point, but we reorganized the geometry according to what teachers asked us to do. So we put our focus on circles and quadrilaterals in the third math. Um, in the second math, we have more of a focus on triangles and their congruence. I would say the biggest change for teachers would be reorganizing of that content as well as working on different types of proofs in both math two and math three. 
So, so you were you were a math teacher. So how, as a math teacher, how long do you think it would take you over the summer to to look over the standards and like how many hours do you think you'd have to devote to, I guess, going through the standards and figuring out what to do next year? Well, I wouldn't want every teacher individually to do that in the state. So that's part of our job is to provide that support and those resources, and that's what we're working on right now. So. At the same time we're producing the drafts, we're also producing documents that will help teachers understand what moved to which course, if it moved at all, so that they can have a real clear understanding. They don't have to do that legwork. They can say, oh, okay. Now, it's important to note here that even though we've got the content changing, teachers are pretty fluid in their assignments. So that's an important consideration that nobody's really talked about, but high school math teachers may not know what courses they're teaching until July. Mm -hmm. So that's not a new thing. It could even be as late as August where my enrollment changed and I would walk in and find out, ooh, I thought I was teaching all math one, but now I'm teaching two sections of math two and a section of math three. So teachers are, high school math teachers especially, are used to this fluid process. And it may be helpful for our teachers to answer that question because yeah. you're on the writing team, we have central office and another teacher, so we welcome your comment. I know that our district is already making plans to gather teachers during the summer, and as a classroom teacher, I actually don't have time to do this part during the school year where I make start making my plans is during the summer, so the fact that this is scheduled to come out in June is actually really convenient, so that way I can spend June and July preparing for August. So that's the, the timeline is actually something that I'm kind of a fan of. And will the oh sorry, uh, will the unpack the unpacking the pacing guides will those be out in time for teachers to look over those? I know that's district level, but I don't know what oh. to answer that. District level. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sonya Dupree and I work with the High School Math Curriculum for Wake County. And as Suzanne was saying, we already have plans in place or, or starting to make plans um, for uh, getting our uh, pacing guides uh, set up first and then from there in our district we actually um, write curriculum. And you know, it's, it's kind of a yearly process for us to go through revisions and tweaks based on the feedback that we get from teachers. So I'm already kind of envisioning in my mind, yeah, this piece is going to move from Math 3 to here, and this little piece of this unit is going to go there. And so it's, it's really going to be, I think, something that's very doable. And in Wake County, you know, people keep saying August, August, August. But we actually would have to have it ready by um, mid-July because we have year-round schools and the students will be back, you know, in middle school taking Math 1 by then. So, you know, we've looked at it, we've talked about it, and we think it's a very doable thing to, to have it up and ready for our teachers in July. And follow Dr. Perkins. And I'd just like to add one thing, is we have a very um, effective resource in our state called Home Base. And so we encourage districts who have the capacity to do that work to upload and share resources through Home Base so that all districts have access to those open ed resources. So that's another factor, another resource that's provided for teachers. And we face the interesting dilemma. On one hand, people are pulling this hand saying, change, change, change. And then on the other hand, we have people pulling in this direction, don't change too fast, don't change too fast. So we're trying to get to a place where it is in the best interest of our students and what they are learning so that they will be prepared for the next step. So I'm sure that all of you can appreciate the challenge we have and the state board has of being pulled in two different directions. Uh, go fast, slow down. Go fast, slow down. Yes? Uh, as it relates to maintenance of a regular and healthy career readiness, I'm wondering if anything you can speak on start to change the trajectory, removing some of the standards uh, from that two, one, two, three, to the fourth year, and how that might affect, say, IP uh, statistics or calculus or computer science or physics uh, enrollment in um, division. Well, we do have with us um, one of our college professors at UNCG, uh, Dr. Wilson, and so um, I think it would be important to hear your perspective about whether you think that the students going through these standards, assuming that they learn them, 
that uh, they would be ready for math at your university. And Dr. Maria Petri Martin, did you want to make a comment? Yeah, I think he can start off. That would be great. I can speak a little to that. I think that the coherence that we brought to the ideas that were in the standards um, will help position students so that they continue to make sense of math and ideas and use math to understand physics, for instance, rather than memorize formulas and try to recall formulas and um, search for recipes to get answers. So I do believe that by creating um, both mathematically and from a kid's thinking perspective, what we know about how kids learn ideas, um, I think the students will be in a much better position. Um, earlier we talked a lot about um, concepts and skills. And so a lot of the research on learning is showing that they're both really important, um, but skills are quick to um, decay if they're not attached to a concept. And so I think pairing those um, in a really clear, strong way for teachers um, can help them help their students make more sense. Um, does that make sense? Is that helpful? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just have, or I'm just curious though, is, is it now going to be a four-year process to get to that, to that point instead of three? No. Do you want to answer that? I'm going to listen to you. I, I, want to, I just want to provide some clarity about the four courses. So there's a lot of overlap. When we adopted the current standards that we have, um, we already had standards from 2003 for pre-calculus, advanced functions, modeling, and discrete, those three fourth-level math courses. Um, we did an analysis when I first came to the department three years ago, and I'm going to say some numbers, but they're rough numbers. Between 45 and 50 percent of the discrete course was already covered in Math 2 and 3. Um, approximately 48 to 51 percent um, of the content in AFM, Advanced Functions and Modeling, was covered in Math 2, Math 1, 2, and 3. Um, Pre-calculus, not so much. I believe it was around 11 or 12 percent. So when we said it's in a fourth level course, what we were trying, it's included, and we use that language very specifically in our documents because it was already there. And so it was an overlap. And what we found where teachers needed more time with students on particular concepts. And if they were already covered in a fourth course, that they were just doing a little bit of surface level work in the third math or the second math, so why not allow more time to go in depth rather than push it all and spread it out? Is that helpful? Yeah. Yes, okay. Sir, appreciate it. Well, we thank all of you for being here. Uh, we want to leave you with these ideas. Number one, North Carolina is committed to higher standards. We are committed to professional development for our teachers. We are committed to listen to feedback that we will get through this transparent process. And we are doing all this work for each student in our school so that we can be, so that each child can be a successful.